Black Cajun Sports has a great Philly guard on the show today. Trey, I don't know if you know this, but you really marked like the, uh, the end of an era, man. You one of the last young boys. I think you are last. The last young boys to play college basketball that actually had Claude Gross cussing them out on the court when they was in middle and high school. I don't think it's too many after you. I no, think he no. slowed down. You, John Davis, y'all was like the last of the guys that caught the full Claude Gross yeah. experience, right? So we're going to start right there. Middle school, South Philly, developmental league, all that. Is that when you knew yeah, got you could really head. play this thing as a, at a high level? Uh, at a high level, I, I would say it probably, yeah, yeah. That's when everybody started telling me I was really good. Um, and, and that's when I started going around the city playing in different, different spots. You know what I mean? That's when I started playing at Mary Anderson and started playing at, uh, you know, at Oren Reed. Um, and then going down to choose and all that. So I start going against, you know, the best best guys all over. And, you know, because I was good, I developed nicknames. Tracy Jordan, Chili Yacht gave me a choose, you know what I mean? Um, but before that, I was just I was just at like uh, the POW and the YMCA. Down you know what South I mean? Philly. Yeah, yeah, up down in South Philly. So so that's that's where I, I met you. I, you probably don't even remember. I, you could have been. You were six, no, no more than seventh grade, and you and Buddha Mock were teammates, and mm -hmm. and she used to help Claude out. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking to Sheed all the time. He like, I got two young boys. You need to come see these young boys. So I get down there. I ain't get to see y'all play because Claude talked, you know, yeah, like so ninety time. fucking minutes. Yeah. <laughs> y'all ain't do no scrimmaging that day, <laughs> but we met. And Claude and Tracy both said, yo, down this Tracy, Tracy, this Claude, uh, Tracy, you need to, any question you ever had about this school shit, this eligibility shit, this the guy right here, you need. And we basically followed <laughs> Claude's directions from yeah. that day forward. Yeah. So initially, I know you was in the pub. People don't know that, but you got hurt that year yeah. at Prep Charter. Yeah. You regret not getting a chance to really lace them up in the pub, or you, you know, you was you okay with how that turned out? I mean, I ain't gonna say I regret it, but I wish I could have just to you know, because I was you know me, I was coming for everybody. Cause I was I was coming to prove myself, you know what I mean? Um not prove myself, but accomplish, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um and you you know, life is life, it didn't go that way. I had to sit out uh and then, you know, like I went you, to Walmart. You missed like the whole year, right? I mean, you really wasn't doing much. No, I missed the whole year. I missed the whole year. Yeah, I missed the whole year. So you decide to go to Roman. Mm -hmm. And y'all have a good team. And you're a good player. Everybody's rolling. What was it like in the Catholic League that sophomore year? It was good. It was It was good. It, again, it was. I was at a new spot, so I was coming to prove myself. Uh and I was the young buck versus like, uh, you know, the Jaquan Newtons and the Newmans and all that. I was the young buck, but I was the leader on the team with Shep Gardner, Sean London, um, you know, a bunch of great guys. Um, but that, it was my team. I was the leader. And uh, I, I was coming because I wanted to be, you know, I always hung around older guys, you, Claude. So I, I wanted to be uh, known with those guys, Jaquan Newton and the Shep Gardeners, you know what I mean? And Rashawn London's. And like, like so many of us who try to get through those teenage years, you, you, you fumbled the ball a little bit near the goal line and you had to make some changes. You know, they, 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 they threw the flag on you. You had to figure out and regroup and call another play. And I'll never forget, you know, we was you was talking about other Catholic schools, you know, maybe moving away. And Donnie and you and I, we say, well, you know, let's just see what they're doing over there in New Jersey. So we ride over to see 
Pastor Dave. Right. At Life Center. Right. And we told him, we, you know, people didn't know you and know me should know you, you wasn't trying to hide. Now you said, Pastor Dave, you know, I messed up a little bit and mm -hmm. this is what it was, but I need a new start and I'm here. I want to learn. I want to be a part of the community. And they embrace you, man. Next thing I know, you sending me pictures from, I don't know, Ecuador, Brazil. I don't know where you was at, man, in the jungle <laughs> Ain't about you, yeah. So you was, yeah. you became a church boy for a couple years over there in New Jersey, man. How was it living in the house? Cause you had some crazy ass teammates, Tracy. You know? Yeah, you know. I love your boys, but fucking Trayvon Reed and uh, Malik Hines and uh, Mo Wick, they were some characters, man. On that characters, team. man. <laughs> oh, what's those God. couple years like at Life Center? Man, it was fun because number one, it was fun because we was winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, we was one of the best, the best, you know, what I mean, teams around. But number two, like you said, we had some characters, Trayvon Reed, and now that, that's my main man. I talked to him the other day; he's doing real good. You know what I mean? But I will give you one quick story. I could tell it because that shit it don't matter now. We we uh, so one day we used to uh, you know, Wawa was a like 15 minutes from us, yeah. 10 minutes, 10, five minutes from us. And he, uh, it was late night, you know, Perv used to be knocked out. <laughs> so <laughs> we, me and Trey, me and Trey, we still have bands. <laughs> <laughs> we still two, it's two of us, it's only two of us. We, he get one van, I get one van. We racing to Wawa, cutting each other off, just out of on some crazy stuff. Long story short, we get back, we pulling into the back into the parking lot of the school. And you know how you can go two ways into the parking lot. Mm -hmm. You can either go the long way or you can cut through and go to by over there by the school. So the cop, it was a cop pulling out the long way, turning. We cut our lights off and turned in the short way. Parked the vans by that, you know, the big ass trailers that they have. We parked the vans by the big ass trailers. And the cop like came back, but we just hide under the trailers. <laughs> once, he, once he came, we ran. We start like we ran. Now I got on, I got Trayvon slippers on. He got we wear like a size 15. <laughs> we wear like a size 15. So I'm running and I'm I'm just keep thinking I'm gonna fall. I realize I'm not falling, I start falling. I fell, I get back up. Trey like Trey, like, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so I get up, I'm running, I'm thinking I dropped something, I'm looking around for a second, then I realize I got it in my hand as I dropped, thought I dropped my phone. So we running, he drops his hurt, you know this boy love candy. He dropped his Reese's. I'm like, man, fuck that Reese's. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> and we had some we had some crazy times though, man. Like I said, we was all good. Like we all went high division one. Yeah, you know what I mean? That was a great team. Yeah. And guys played their role, you know, Trayvon, protect the rim. Exactly. Dump everything he get a chance to dump. Exactly. Exactly. Malik Hines, big, strong, you know, got his, got exactly. his back. Exactly. And Malik. Yeah, that was, that was a tough, tough team. So I like to, um, I really, I use you as an example, seriously, because, you know, and I've said this to you in the past. Tracy, you was really a pain in the ass about this academic <laughs> eligibility shit. Yeah. You got a new grade or a grade or a new report card. Trey would text you the grade. Yo, we need to calculate my shit. I need yeah. to make sure I'm straight. All right, I hear you. When you coming up here? <laughs> right. <laughs> I wasn't bullshit. I was trying to get in. <laughs> so now we sitting in the classroom. I'm at the whiteboard explaining to you how you straight. You needed to. We needed the mathematical proof. This nigga wanted to show all yeah. work, dog. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I need to get. So it's all straight. And your knee is holding up. So Creighton comes around. A lot of Big East schools come around. It was late, though. Yep. And you settle I, in. I hurt again. Yeah. Yeah. And you settle in on Wojo. And, and Marquette in the Big East. Talk about that real quick. Man, it was, it was, uh, so Wojo and them found, like you said, Wojo and them found me late. 
Um, but I was out, I was actually out this way out uh, at the uh, the basketball Hall of Fame tournament, and we was playing uh, Thon Maker. Um, and uh, Wojo see me and he liked me and, and they called me and uh, you know I got I seen who who he had on his staff and it was all guards. You know, so I'm like, it, it's no better place for me to go with these guys. You know what I mean? Um, but w- once I got to Marquette, it was a great situation because I, I was, came in and I was able to play right away. Right that away. Shit, experience. you averaged like five assists that year, Trey. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you yeah. Got a good freshman year. Was it too cold for your ass, though? Tell the truth. No, nah, no. Nah, uh, nah, yeah, it was. It was coldish. <laughs> I was I was in shock because, like, that joint, it would be f- Minus five degrees, they still ain't canceling school. <laughs> they only cancel it when it's minus 20, shit like that. It's regular up there, dog. Yeah. yeah. I never forget when I went off when I went on my visit, it, you know, it's summertime. So I went on my visit, and you know, it's hot as it's hot, it's hot as hell in Philly. I go up there, I'm like, I ain't got no hoodie no now. I'm like, damn, it's cold as shit out here. It was like just a totally different cold. They right by Chicago. Everybody yeah, not cold. It's almost it. Canada, man. Yeah. So, so you have a, a real good freshman year, which you started most of the year, damn there every game, right? Yep. Yep. And so your second year, it starts off and gets a little rocky. I'll never forget, man. You was a little bit frustrated. <laughs> and we talked on the phone. And I was like, well, Trey, you know, just just make it through the year, man. You know, right. just make, just put your head down, do what you gotta do. I swear to God, man, I picked up the paper like the next day, man. <laughs> I was, I was going. Tracy was out. I like I what was, the fuck, man. I asked so you to make it through the year when you, you know, you got a bunch of young boys right now facing real similar decisions. You know, how did you know it was time that you had to get up out of there? What made you feel like? You had to make that change. Uh it was for me. It was uh, it was like uh, for me, it was it was a, a feeling of like it was time that because you know I'm talking to one of my to one of the coaches staff who I was real close with on the guys on there. I'm like, you know, I'm a realist. So I said, just be be real with me. Am I boy? Am, am I boy? Am I bitching or do I need to? tighten up and settle down or do is it time for me to go you know what i mean and he basically said he basically said it's time for me to go you feel me okay and you know it's life too short for you to be someplace that you unhappy at you know what i mean now maybe i should have stayed maybe i did jump the gun you feel me and who knows I mean, but Trey, it was like the next day i mean you had some little some words with somebody, you was frustrated. I never heard you like that. You was like, man, I, I cussed him out and this. I was like, what? <laughs> I never seen that side of Trey. Yeah. And I was like, all right, we well, just hold on, Trey. You know, we all right, make it through the year. Yeah. I swear to God, man, I turned on the news or the TV. It's on the bottom, Tracy Carter transferring. What the fuck? So you decide to come back home. Ash. You know, you you committed to G though, didn't you? Then Ash got the job. Yeah, I committed to G, and G was still a coach for a year, my sit out year. And so Ash comes in, you know, it's his first time being a head coach. He got you. Uh, y'all have a rough start. You know, those first ten games was oh, really time. rough. But yeah. I was in Atlantic City when y'all won that first game, man. I seen the look on your face, his face. There was a lot of relief there, man. It was a lot, you know, to get that monkey off your back. And then the rest of that year, y'all was really competitive, man. Did yeah. you did you enjoy your time? You know, I know you had your brother on staff, so that had to be a little different. Because, you know, right. you and Donnie, y'all fucking heads and tails. It's the same coin, man. Right. So, <laughs> so, so how was that playing with Ash, playing for Ash and Donnie and playing in the city? Um did it was a big difference between that and playing in, in Marquette? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, t- I tell people this all the time, man. I say, like, uh, me going back to Philly was probably the worst decision I ever could have made because it made all the normal stuff. Uh, it made all the not normal stuff when I left to go to Marquette 
normal again. And <clears throat> honestly, I'm lucky I didn't get into more stuff than I did back home. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, you got people calling you. This happened. That happened. When you're away, nobody call you because you ain't you can't do nothing about you it. Can't do nothing. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, even to, to even down to the little stuff like uh, girls I would mess with. Like when I left Marquette, it was girls that I was like, I ain't, I ain't never, I ain't messing with her. When I got back to Philly, it was like, oh, it's acceptable now. You know what I mean? <laughs> even down to small stuff like that. But with that being said. Again, is this, is a, it was a balance to it because it's a contradiction because it was a it was a great decision at the same time because I learned so much about myself. You feel my feel me? Playing for Ash helped me learn so much about myself, mm-hmm. and that's what that's the biggest thing that helped me out. Not even what the not even with the basketball stuff that Ash taught me, the stuff that he taught me about myself that he made me. What I what I observe. Because I saw you, you know, from 12, 13 on up. And what what you definitely have a, a hell of a skill at is, is reading a room. So you come into a situation, you're like, okay, this is what it is. Maybe the basketball piece, you know, maybe it's not going to go the way I want it to go or whatever. But I'm getting this degree, dog. We're we we not going to lose sight. I see so many guys, you know, they get frustrated because – bad game, bad season, bad whatever, bad relationship with the coach, and you let the grade slide, and then you limit your options. You know, now you you stuck. You got to do this. You got to do that, trying to get back. But that was never an issue. And you one of the few guys, you know, I ask all y'all, you know, what's up with the grades? And, you know, guys be like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. You like the only dude I never double check. You know, I never went behind your back and asked Ash and Donnie, you know, because I knew if you wasn't good, you wanted the motherfuckers to be like, yo, I need some help. Right, <laughs> you know? right. Where right. did that, when did that start? Because it, it, it was there by life center. Well, at Roman, at Prep Charter, you was always on top of that part of this thing? At, it started, honestly, at uh, when I started to get hurt. And I started to realize that, you know what, like this basketball shit might not work out. Mm-hmm. I got to figure something else out. And and honestly, the forget that part, but it was you and Donnie that made me realize that, yo, you got to do your work too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but also basketball, like my grandma told me, I'm writing a book right now in my life, and my grandma told me that, like, I didn't start doing good until I started playing basketball when I went to university in school. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I knew in order for me to do what I love, I had to get those grades right. You feel me? But like I said, once I started getting hurt, I realized that like, yo, see, my, my, my main thing was like, yes, I wanted to make the NBA, but my main thing was really make the NBA for the money. Don't get me wrong. I love basketball, but it was to make it out the hood. You feel mm-hmm. me? And take care of my family. Mm-hmm. So once I realized that I might not be able to do it with basketball, it was like, yo, I got to do it some other way, some other, some other else way. You know what I mean? You know, that that adaptiveness, you display that on the court as well. Because, you know, when you was 15, 16, you relied a lot on quickness, speed, you know. And as time wore on, you know, sometimes you walk by, I hear those knees clicking and shit, you know. Right, right. <laughs> right. And, and the, the wheels just have a, a, a lot of mileage on them. And so you've had to become – a different kind of player yet and still you leave you leading your league what and steals again this year yeah so yeah. you still score and you still assisted do you did you find yourself having to reinvent your game like how you gonna still be effective if you just not as quick not as fast as you once was because I, I i learned at uh not at an early age but i learned later in my years of basketball what i was good at and then I reinvented how to still be good at that. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So if I so let, just give you an example for stills, like if I want you to go this way, and I'm on defense, then or if say if you go into the basket, most guys got to bring the ball back. So I'll let you go to the basket, and then once you bring the ball back, I'm gonna swipe. Then you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So for me, it's all about it's a thinking game, and I realized that later in my basketball career. 
And I was like, yo, what am I good at? All right, so I'm good at defense. I'm good at steals. All right, but now how can I be, how can I be more efficient less with less work, using less work? You know what I mean? So talk about the the player for John Gallagher compared to Wojo, compared to Ash. I mean, it, it from just looking at the stats, John is just going to win, lose, or draw with you out there on the court. You know, right. so for the first time, I think there's just no issue. You know, going in, you know, as long as you stay out of foul trouble, it's going to be 34, 35, 36 minutes on the floor. Um, right. Is that relationship, that player coach relationship, has that been the, uh, I, I would say, the most productive one of your college career? And what is it about Gallagher that allows you to flourish under his system? Yeah, man, like, Definitely, our relation, our player coach relationship has definitely been the best one of I, I had, have had, um, where he's almost like an older brother. You know what I mean? From Philly, so he understands. And um, me being older, he has that trust. He has that trust in in his players. Where the difference between all three of those guys, all three of those guys is, uh, you know, like Wojo was was one of my best coaches as well, right? But God lets every player be him, and he does not take away from him. He's more affirmative guy where he, he'll he uh, encourage you more than he tell you what not to do. You know what I mean? And uh, so that's the biggest difference between all three of those guys where God was more affirmative and he's going to pump you up more than anything. You know what I mean? Because he understands that it's all about, and he truly understands it's all about confidence, all about confidence. So he never takes a player confidence. And then the other, the most important part is those two, Wojo and uh, Ash, they focus on basketball, where Gal is focused on life, which will transition into basketball. Mm -hmm. So they don't, they ain't convert you, man. You're not a Connecticut resident long term, are you? You coming back? What you doing after this thing, man? No, I'm out here, baby. I'm out here. You now you you done. You're you're a New Englander. Yeah, I'm a New Englander, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna come back and visit, but I'm a New Englander, baby. I'm a New England. How is your sister, your people, your grandma, everybody good, man? Yeah, everybody good. I just talked to uh, and my grandma yesterday. You know, she's still cussing cats out. <laughs> So what's what's next for you on this court, man? You can you can you ice them up, wrap them up? You got some more miles left on these things. We gonna keep playing. What you gonna do? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I got a little bit more miles on me, but um, what I'm more solely focused on is uh, you know, the business aspect of life and and making a difference in life. As you know, my little brother got killed this past summer. Uh. I started a nonprofit. Uh, in the name of him, which is helping kids. Did it happen you know. in South Philly? Yeah, no, nah, in uh, uh, at King Sesson, actually. Okay. On Southwest. Gunshots? Yeah, he got shot up in the car. Yep. So I started a nonprofit where I brung, there's a camp where I brung uh, eight kids out to my business partner, Jim Newfrock, owns a farm in Madison, New York, up by Colgate University. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was an overnight, uh, it was an overnight camp. Three, it was three nights, four days, and we taught the kids trades, you know, plumbing, electrical work, carpentry, and we gave them a different perspective on what their life can be and what it should be. Man, that sounds that sounds outstanding, man. Outstanding. So, as far as the immediate short term future, you gonna get an agent and field the calls and see what you can get done. Honestly, probably not. Honestly, I'm. You know, I've been. You, as you know, man, you, you've been with me my whole life. But I've been. The the basket basketball has took such a toll on my body. That um, you know, I just ain't. I just ain't. I, I'm not willing to, you know, put my body through that, and I don't have to. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Much as I love basketball, I don't have to. So. Well, because you took everything else serious. And one thing I know, you know, I, I, I want, over the years, I want to get you to 
start talking to young people about when you meet people, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay mm -hmm. to find out what they do for a living. It's okay mm -hmm. to inquire about their business. Typically, you know, if you're a basketball player, people are excited to meet you. Right. And, but that gives you an opening, you know, to ask about what they do in life, how they, yeah. how they make their money, how they take care of their family, what their legacy is going to be. And I know you've done a really good job with that. And everywhere you've been, you know, you leave a really strong, a really strong impression on everyone, man. And, and, you know, that can't be overstated, the importance of having those relationships. So now, as you think, you look at it and you feel like your plan days might be winding down. You got no fear, no trepidation. You know, you like, okay, I know I can go do this. I can go do that. And that comes from years of preparation. And I give Claude Gross credit. You know, God rest his soul. You know, he saw this in you. Man, he used to talk about you and Buddha. Oh my God, them guys. They was, he had so much uh, uh, pride. So much expectations for you guys. And I have to tell you, man, you lived up to all of them. All of them, Trey. You get this motherfucking championship and you go to the NCAA tournament tomorrow, I'm going to be doing headstands over there, man. <laughs> right? well, I'm going to be doing headstands right with you. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. No, but on a serious note, man, I wanted to say this. You know, God rest call soul, man. But he was one of the, uh, as you know, he was one of my most important teachers. Because, you know, I, I didn't understand it. How could you be in my age? But the game that he was given, making us stand on the line and talking to us for so many, like he gave us lessons about loyalty, uh, uh, you know, uh, not taking stuff serious. He gave us so many lessons that as you look back now, it's like it, it changes your life. You know what I mean? Wow. And, and I can never forget that. And, you know, we all miss him. Well, all right. I got another meeting starting now, brother. Right. But, you know, I love you, Tracy Carter. And this is this is exciting, man. You all I got left. You know, I ain't no Nova fan. And all <laughs> right. the rest of them out. They all out. Right. Everybody out. Drexel right. snuck in. But, you know, it's you. You carrying the weight, brother. You know it, baby. Like always. <laughs> All right, man. All right, Dale. Love you. Later, man. All right.